Hello, and welcome to Theology with an English Accent. My name is David, and I am the author of the blog RestlessPilgrim.net, and we are now starting to draw to the conclusion of the Epistle to the Philippians. In today's text, we're going to read about the main reason behind the authorship of this letter, what it was that prompted Paul to send the Philippians this letter. Let's look at the text. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent me help once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit which increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am filled, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. So Paul begins by saying how kind it was for the Philippians to remember him and to send him gifts by the hand of Epaphroditus, one of the members of the Philippian community. But in these verses, Paul also gives us a little bit more detail about Paul's missionary activities that we read about in Acts 16 and 17, around the time when Paul founded the Philippian community. In the verses that we've just read, Paul says that no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Basically, he's saying that it was the church of Philippi and them alone who supported Paul in his ministry. And he says that even when he was at Thessalonica, they sent him help. And that was one of the cities that Paul visited after, soon after he had been in Philippi. So now that we're drawing to our close in our study of Philippians, we can begin to see why the Philippians supported Paul and why he was willing to accept their assistance. They were generous, to be sure, but they also had a very good relationship with the Apostle. As I said before, he knew and loved them, they knew and loved him. And even today, the question of, of money in the church is always a, somewhat of a thorny issue. And even earlier in Philippians, we read about some people who preached Christ out of partisanship. And I said in that episode that they were preaching Christ not primarily because of love of Christ, but for what they could get out of it. A reputation, money, whatever. And if you read Acts of the Apostles and some of Paul's other letters, this question of, of, of money and someone's motivations certainly comes up. But with the Philippian church, that just isn't even a question. And Paul describes their gift to him in very interesting terms. He calls it a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. Now, to be sure, it was a sacrifice for the Philippians and the fact that they had to give something up to send to Paul. But Paul is using this language to evoke the temple and the various offerings uh, that, would be, that would be made there and that would rise like incense and smoke. But my favorite part of this section is when Paul says this. He says, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit which increases to your credit. Now, Paul was grateful for the gift, of course, but what really gave him joy wasn't so much the fact that it benefited him, but that it benefited the Philippians. Because when God saw the Philippians looking after their brother in Christ, Paul, it pleased God greatly. I'm reminded of the last time I went back to England. I bought my niece some chocolate buttons and I put a, a few of them in a bowl and took them to her and she absolutely loved them. And there was one left and she'd been playing with her toys. And I, I said, Rachel, would you like another chocolate button? And she took it and split it so that I could have some. Now, I can buy 
all those chocolate buttons that my heart desires. But seeing my niece be that beautiful and that selfless gave me joy that no amount of chocolate buttons that I would purchase for myself could possibly give me. And I think in the same way when a parent sees siblings loving each other and sharing, it gives the parent great, great joy. So that's today's text. And for today's challenge, I would invite you to give a gift. Give a gift for the love of Christ. It doesn't have to be huge. You could buy a co-worker lunch, buy a stranger a coffee, um, whatever. But give something out of love of Christ. And if you would like my bank account details, please just send me an email. So until our final episode, in the words of Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen, God love you.